Hi, I've had a lot of requests lately for uh, tutorials in Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a really great way to get started in 3D design. Probably the easiest of the ways uh, out there right now. Certainly the easiest of the ones I've looked at. It's also great because it's a free tool. It's all web-based, so it doesn't matter what device you're on. You can get on and start uh, tinkering. And simply go to tinkercad.com. You can create an account. And the first time you sign in, it will start you off with a little tutorial. It's probably a 30, 45 minute tutorial. I highly recommend it. It's a great way to get going. But I'm going to go through some of those same skills here uh, very quickly. So once you're in a main screen, you can create a new design. It pulls you up to a completely blank workspace. And the beautiful thing about Tinkercad is it's mostly drag and drop. So I take a shape from the right side, just drag it into my workspace, and I've already created a shape. When I want to manipulate the shape, I just grab one of these handles. If I grab a corner handle, it'll move in two dimensions. I can move it all kinds of different ways. If I want to keep it in proportion while I'm dragging it, I hold down the shift key and drag it, and now the proportions all stay the same. There are also handles on the side that I can move in one direction only, and one on the top to resize it in that vertical direction. There are three more handles that are really difficult to see for resize, uh, for, for changing this around. These are on the corners here. And if I move one of those, I will rotate it. If I move my mouse within this little blue circle, it will snap to commonly used angles. If I take it outside, I have much more granular uh, movement. And there's also this black arrow on top which will move things up and down off the plane. So you see, I can also move my view around in the plane. This is maybe the most critical and difficult component to get used to. Um, for a number of reasons. If, if you don't move around, you really can't tell what you're, what you're seeing. The most common mistake I see when I'm 3D printing something is I'll, I'll have a student try to print something where it looks like two shapes are connected. You change your view, they're not. And this is a disaster when you get it on a 3D printer. So get into the habit of moving around your workspace. And this is simple. You just hold your right mouse button down and drag. Now there are a couple other ways to change your view. You can zoom in and out using your mouse wheel or using a two finger gesture on your trackpad. Or if you hold down the shift key while you click your right mouse button, you can move your whole work plane around. And that's particularly useful if you're zoomed into something. So once I have some shapes, I can change their color. This does not change the color that it's going to print in. It's going to print in whatever color is loaded into the printer at that time. And I can group shapes together. Let's put this uh, cylinder on the edge here. If I group two shapes together, I, can, I need to select them both. I can either drag a box around both of them to select them, or I can hold down the shift key and individually click the pieces I want to group. Once I've got all the pieces I want to group, I go up above the inspector and the top of the screen, hit group, and they are now one piece. I can move them together, rotate them, resize them, whatever I want to do. Now you'll notice also they change to the same color when you group that. You can actually keep your colors if you click color and check this multicolor box, then it will keep your original colors on there. It's it's not a it's not going to make any difference in how it prints, but sometimes while you're designing something it really makes a difference in how you can uh, set that up. Another skill that's critical is being able to cut pieces out. So if I select one of these pieces and click the whole button up next to the color on the inspector, it turns transparent. Now this isn't actually cutting anything yet. Let's move this around just a little bit here. To make it actually cut, I need to group these two together. So I'll select them both, hit the group button, and now I've cut that one piece out. And this can be handy too if I want to create more complex pieces. Let's say I've made this little box. 
change the color just for fun. And I want to round this edge. I can take this shape that I have made by cutting out a cylinder here and use that kind of as a cutting tool. Let's rotate that around. Let's pull it up here. And now just like I did with the cylinder, I can make this whole complex shape into a hole, group them together, and I've beveled this edge, so I've, I can make a rounded edge that way. This is really handy. You can do an awful lot of things just with these simple tools of adding shapes in and subtracting them. There are a number of shortcuts to do complex things, though. Uh, one thing I recommend is looking at the Shape Generator section on Tinkercad. Here, a, there are a whole lot of tools that either the Tinkercad people or just community members have made to make some things easier. My favorite is the text tool. When you pull the text tool in, it gives you a box where you can type in whatever text you want. And once you have it, I also change the font. And then you can manipulate this just like any other shape. Resize it. You can rotate it. Sometimes it's hard to get a grip. You can rotate it. You can cut it out of something else. That's maybe my favorite of these tools, but there are hundreds of tools that community members have made. And each of them has a different set of parameters, different types of things you can adjust here and see what it does. So here you've got a, a vent pipe that you can change the shape of this, shape of the hole inside. You can change the shape of the pipe on the outside. You can change the arc diameter. And this is all something that somebody has programmed in for you to use. So once you've played with this and made something that you want to keep, there are a couple things you need to do. One is you need to give it a proper name. So it's it makes up a name to give it in the top left corner here. To change that into something you can remember and find again, you can click on Design and Properties, change the name. And the other thing you might want to do once you've made something is send it to be printed. It's really easy to make the file that you need uh, to print. Uh, the file you need is called an STL file. Uh, you probably don't need to remember that. You click on Design, Download for 3D Printing, and just remember it's the very first option here. If you click the uh, STL button, you'll see it downloads into your My Documents folder. You can just take that file and send it to whoever you want to print it. It's not a big file. You can email that file or, or send it on a flash drive, whatever you want to do, and somebody else will be able to print that. A couple other tools that are very handy to know about. If I have a couple shapes and I want them lined up, I can select both of the shapes and go up to Adjust, just over the inspector, and click Align. And now I can align these shapes however I want. That's probably the easiest of ways to keep things all lined up. So the best way to really get good at Tinkercad is just to play. Uh, start making some th simple things, make a plaque with your name on it, make a little toy car or a snowman, something with simple shapes that you can put together until you kind of get the hang of it, and then you can start making more complex shapes. You can do some really neat things with this program. It's simple, it's very quick to get started on. But you can see I, I've made some interesting things here. I made a jack-o'-lantern. It took me at most 10 minutes. Put a little light in there. It was very entertaining for Halloween. I've made uh, switch plates for my lights at home. As one of the students made a birthday card. She grabbed the, uh, the Snoopy figure here on the birthday card from something somebody else had done and made a plaque around it. That's another neat thing you can do. I've made business cards in 3D. And all of these things are really pretty quick to make once you get the hang of it. So go out. Play with the program, have fun, and make some neat things.